Good morning, loves. So today I'm reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 8 through 12. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of, ch of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasures, cities, Pithom, and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Okay, so first I want to point out that according to archaeologists' research of ancient Egypt, it was a custom that when the king died, the king was buried with um, close relatives and things that he valued in his human life to um, take with him into the afterlife. So there were human sacrifices made when the king died to accompany him into the afterlife. Also, the noble, um, the noble young men in the land was also sacrificed so that the new king wouldn't have any competition that could rise up against him. So I just want to point out that for a very long time throughout history, the male ego has been challenged by external forces. This is nothing new. However, for the um, children of God, we have to understand that the male is a very important, intricate part of society being balanced. And there are no external forces that can decrease the might and power within our men. So once they realize that and they tap into the internal forces and the promises of God placed on their lives, then we can continue to move forward without fighting against the male ego. So the male ego has been damaged over years, over throughout history, through slavery, through mass incarceration, through um, gang banging, and, and trying to prove the masculinity of a man. And it's been tarnished and it's been um, challenged. However, at this point in time, we are healing from that. Our men need to heal. They need to take the time and heal their egos. And this is not just something that has occurred over their lifetime, but the lifetime of their ancestral forefathers before, um, before slavery. Your ego has been damaged. So in exerting yourselves and, and understanding the power of your ego does not lie within yourself and it does not depend on external forces. You will come forth in the promises of God. You will come forth in the identity that was already given to you by God versus trying to um, compete with external forces because external forces have been set up against you to question your manhood, to question your power, to question your worth. And there's no question of your worth or your power or your manhood because you are loved by God. You are chosen by God to lead. So um, I just want our men to just understand that you are valued, you are loved, you are cherished. And this is not from the black woman or the children. This is from God. So be your godlike selves, walk in your godlike power, and adhere to the instructions of God's word in biblical scripture. Because that is your way, that is your identity, not what the world says you are or the, what the world tries to portray you as being. Okay, loves, have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys later.